how to knit a German short row heel. Hi everyone, my name is Norman. I run the blog nimbleneedles.com and in this video I want to show you everything you need to know about knitting socks with a German short row heel. Here in Germany we call it a boomerang heel or boomerang ferse to be more precise. It's probably the easiest sock heel of them all and creates a perfect fit for everyone with a slender foot. You don't need to pick up any stitches, you don't need to add a gusset and there are no complicated calculations involved either. So it's perfect for beginners. And as I'm currently working on these everyday socks in this really rustic uh, plastic free organic sock yarn, I thought it would be a nice opportunity to show you this sock heel alternative. So let's dive right into it and knit a German short row heel together. I assume you're currently at the position where you want to start knitting your heel. If you want to know how to knit socks in general, I'll put a link to my full sock tutorial up in here and in the description below. You will also find the link to the written instructions for the German short row heel in the description. So maybe open that in a different browser tab or print it out. It's the first link below. Now back to the instructions. Like so many other heels, you knit the German short row heel across half of your stitches. I cast on 50 stitches total, so I'll knit my heel across 25 stitches. I'm using a contrasting yarn, but you can obviously knit using the same yarn as well. And now in the first row, you have to uh, divide your stitches, in my case 25, into three equal parts. So this means I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I knit eight stitches. Then I place a stitch marker and then I um, knit nine stitches and I transfer my stitches to one needle. You're going to knit the heel flat, so you can might as well just knit with one needle. So I knit nine stitches. One, two, three, four, one, two, four, nine stitches. Place another stitch marker and then I finish that row. Let me get there quickly. So now I have eight stitches here on both sides and nine in the middle. And it doesn't matter how many stitches your heel is wide, just divide it by three. And if your number isn't dividable by three, then the middle portion gets one or more, uh, two stitches more. So maybe for you it's seven, eight, seven, or 10, 11, 10, or 11, 11, 11. Um, and I always knit across the first and the uh, second needle. But depending on your pattern, you may consider placing your heel a bit differently. Just pick something uh, where your stitch pattern looks best. This first row was the preparation and now we have to start with the short rows. So from here you are not continuing uh, knitting in the round. Instead you turn the work around and you start knitting into the other direction. And that's what you call short rows. It's really nothing else but stopping mid round and knitting in the other direction. Now, if you would just continue knitting or rather purling into that direction, um, you would eventually create a lot of little gaps and holes here and you probably don't want this. So you need to employ a special technique. And the German short row method goes like this. So you need to bring the yarn to the front and then you need to slip that stitch together with the yarn knit wise, knit wise. And then you need to pull on the working yarn really tightly. So you bring the stitch down and you create two, can you see this, two little loops here and this is called a double stitch and that's already it. 
I'll do some editing magic to show it to you one more time. You need to bring the yarn to the front and then you need to slip this stitch together with the yarn knitwise. Slip it knitwise. And then you only need to tuck on that tail really tightly to bring the stitch down and you create two uh, loops up in here. And this is called a double stitch or make double stitch in patterns. And that's already it. And while I'm purling across the rest of the stitches, I quickly wanted to remind you that I love shooting these videos, but I need your support. So why don't you give me a thumbs up right now, leave a nice comment or even subscribe to my channel. So I finished purling across and now you need to turn the work around again and start, then start the next row with a double stitch again. So make sure the yarn is in front, slip it knitwise and then tuck on the working yarn to create a, create a double stitch and then simply knit across. So knit across until you reach the double stitch you created before. And here at the end of the row, as you come across that first double stitch, don't knit it, instead turn your work around again. And now start this row with another double stitch. So there should be two double stitches here and then purl across until you reach um, the double stitch on the other side. And here on the other side, it's exactly the same. Don't knit or rather purl the double stitch. Instead, turn around, turn around and create, start the next round with another double stitch, uh, double stitch and then knit across. And now you're probably wondering why we need the stitch markers. And basically what you have to do is you need to continue repeating these two rows over and over again until you used up all stitches before and after the stitch marker. And there are double stitches all the way on both sides. And I guess I'll see you there. So I used up all stitches and there's just double stitches to the left and the right of my stitch markers. And um, this is what it looks like now. And now you need to knit across two full rounds of knit stitches. So until now we just knit across these two needles, but now you need to add two rounds of knit stitches. And uh, I accidentally dropped a stitch here. So knit across. And as you come across the double stitches, let me get there quickly. As you come across the double stitches, you need to knit them together through the back loop. Knit them together through the back loop. See, I knit them together through the back loop. Oops. Through the back loop and knit don't need to lose or you risk creating um, gaps here. So keep a nice tension and knit them together through the back loop and do the same on the other side. And like, as I said, knit across two full rounds here. So I finished knitting those two rounds and now we need to start with the second part of our German short row heel. Here are the two stitch markers and before we started the short rows on the edge and we worked our way from the edge to the inside. And now we need to do it the other way around. So we start here and increase the short rows by one stitch every row until we hit the edge. Let's knit that together. So first you need to knit across until you reach the second stitch marker, the one here on the left. And you can drop it, we won't need it anymore. And then you need to knit one more stitch. 
and then turn your work around and start the second row with a double stitch the way you did before. So start with a double stitch and then purl across until you reach the remaining stitch marker and again you can drop the stitch marker we don't need it anymore and then purl one more stitch and again turn your work around and start the third row with another double stitch so start with a double stitch and then knit across to the double stitch let me get there to the double stitch and now knit that double stitch together through the back loop so knit it together knit one more stitch turn around again and start the fourth row with another double stitch start with a double stitch and purl across purl across until you reach the double stitch and you need to purl together that double stitch here purl it together purl one more stitch and turn the work around and from here you need to continue repeating these two rounds until you reached the edge and used up all stitches so i finished the second part of my german short row heel and this is what it looks like now um, i am using this super sturdy plastic free uh, organic sock yarn that has a rather rustic um, stitch definition still I think you can see um, how nice this heel can look and from here you can simply continue knitting in around the way you normally would just make sure as you uh, turn the work around one last time you Add one more uh, double stitch here at the edge and then knit across and as you come across these two double stitches you knit them together through the back loop the way you did before and here at the very end of this video I wanted to uh, show you one more thing so um, I told you to knit the German short rows like this. So bring the yarn to the front and then slip the stitch knitwise. However, you can also slip the stitch purlwise, but then you have to bring the yarn around and pull it down like this. And as you come across these stitches in the return row, you knit them together. So I told you to uh, slip them knitwise and knit them together through the back loop. And that's uh, the way my uh, grandmother showed me the boomerang fairs. But you can do either way, whatever you feel um, suits your style of knitting best. This is how I do it. Anyway, I hope you were able to knit along and I was able to show you how to knit the German short row heel. Please give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed watching, comment with your feedback and your questions and of course consider subscribing to my channel in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.